This is the most hostile comment section on YouTube, and I feel like I can say with a high degree of certainty that this is the longest argument ever in a YouTube comment section lasting an entire year and spanning roughly 500 some replies. Now with this kind of anger, you would expect the video to be some kind of politically charged video, or maybe somebody said anime should be illegal or that lollies are a crime. Something that really puts a hate boner where someone's flaccid cock once was. But what if I told you that the video that all of this is taking place on, the most aggressive comment thread on YouTube, was actually on a Paper Mario song. I'm gonna take you on a journey through this war zone here. We're not gonna read every reply but just because there is so many. This thing's longer than the fucking Bible, honestly. But we're gonna go through the big parts, the big moments here in the manga, make sure we get the gist of what's going on because this may be one of the greatest stories ever told. It's got it all. It's got a little something for everyone. A story of betrayal, violence, love, terrorism, action, drama, mystery, and most of all, Mario. Chapter 1, The Catalyst. This is where it all begins. This is ground zero. Lunar1314 leaves a comment saying, I don't care if, it, if I get hate because of this opinion, but this is my favorite Paper Mario Final Boss song. A bold and brave hot take. Someone didn't tell Lunar that opinions are illegal on the internet. It's not the most controversial thing to say, it's simply a matter of liking a song. But this is the internet, and you can't like something that somebody else doesn't like. A lesson our boy Lunar here is about to learn the hard way. Enter the villain, Aramaru 1837. Because you're like nine, haven't even played the other games, I guarantee you. And now, just like the Powerpuff Girls when the hotline rings, our hero rolls in. Dave Matthew. These are our primary characters. Of course, we get introduced to other important side characters throughout the season here. The lore gets very deep, trust me. But this is basically the Batman and the Joker, Dave and Aramaru. Dave sweeps in in defense of Lunar. How about we agree that you are a jerk? Everyone can have their own opinion, and that is the internet, so no one cares about your opinion to begin with. Also, instead of throwing insults at me, why don't you try to get me to see things from your perspective? It would be a lot more time efficient and unlike insults actually accomplishes something in the long run. Or you can continue to assume that I am a mere child that does not know of the... five? Other Paper Mario games? Or was it four? Or has even played them, both opinions being completely wrong. But as I said, it's the internet. We can go in circles all day and night and neither of us would get anywhere. So let's not, okay? Dave trying to get out ahead here and squash the beef, giving a fair warning to Aramaru that you do not want to fuck with Dave, but, spoiler alert, Aramaru pokes the sleeping bear. You never gave your side, dumb fuck. All you did was come on here talking about some damn opinions or some shit. Pretty clear you didn't intend to accomplish anything. Also, you haven't played any other game, have you? It's not hard to know how many Paper Mario games there are, kid. 64, Thousand Year Door, Super Paper Mario, this garbage, and Color Splash, which was actually not bad, but was too weird gameplay-wise to be called a Paper Mario game. And it's this comment right here that makes a good boy go bad. You do not question Dave Matthews' understanding of the Paper Mario franchise, and you do not do it on a public forum like this, and be an asshole about it. The opinion haver that started all of this comes back in here, kicks open the doors to the church of Paper Mario with tears in his eyes like he just watched his parents having a fight, saying, All I said was, this is my favorite final boss song in the Paper Mario series, but it turned into a huge fight and I don't understand that. And then Aramaru hits him with a hard dose of reality. You said you don't care if you get hate, so obviously you do understand, dumb fuck. Unfortunately, Lunar just doesn't understand that his initial comment was like the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and now he's started a massive war. And in war, Lunar, there's casualties. I know you can say whatever you want, but please, can you please calm down and make a nice comment to people? Like I said, please not say about a thousand cuss words with this reply, please. It's not hurting you to read a quick fuck. Look, I'm understanding everything you're saying, I'm just here to calm you down, not everything in the world is solved by anger. Jedi Brooklyn Green comes in here and tries to reason with Sith Lord Aramaru here about how anger's not the key, but it's all for nothing because Aramaru has already been consumed by his anger. Like I said, I am cutting out a couple things here because there is so much of it, it'd be like a 10 hour video if I read the entire chain. Basically, in a nutshell, Dave was saying this is pointless, it's an internet argument, let's just drop this. And he concludes his monologue with, well since we both agree that this whole thing is pointless, let us just agree to disagree and be on our way then. Aramaru. Cool. 
so fuck off. Peace was never an option. Nah, seeing your pointless insults because you can't come up with an actual comeback to my remarks is rather funny to me. Heh <laughs> I thrive off your pointless rage. Thought it was done. Why are you still here, idiot? As I said, I thrive off your rage and anger. You want me to stop? Stop being angry. Easy. Dave Matthews is slowly accumulating power like a spirit bomb fueled by Aramaru's rage. He is laughing in the face of Aramaru's anger. Not angry, dumb fuck. Piss off. See? Angry. Not angry, dumb fuck. Piss off. I see that you're running out of comebacks. I can give you a few if you need them. Dave, of course, being one of the world's leading comeback dealers. Not stressful, you're just annoying, lol. And there's plenty of music better than this shit, even from Color Splash. Uh-huh. Why don't you go back to your thousand-year-old game and super overrated Paper Mario game? Your screen. Oh, boo-hoo. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest viol- Oh wait, I broke it. If this was done, why did you reply? Metal Mario coming in here just spitting straight venom in the face of Aramaru here, lighting him on fire with the world's smallest violin comment. Nice try, dumb fuck, but I haven't even played any Paper Mario games except Color Splash. Now fuck off with your shitty excuses for jokes, people have better shit to read. When I initially made it to this chapter the first time and got blindsided by this plot twist, I fucking recoiled into my chair, threw my arms in the air, I was just so absolutely shocked. I felt like I was witnessing history, like I am your father level twists here. This is subverting expectations done extremely well, not Game of Thrones season 8 bullshit. This is how you surprise a reader with a narrative plot twist. Who could have seen this coming? If you remember back to the genesis of this whole mess, it started with Aramaru melting down and breaking shit in his room over the fact that somebody liked a Paper Mario song he didn't like, and then accuses them of not having played any of the other Paper Mario games, and then only a short hundred replies later, he himself admits he's only ever played one Paper Mario game, and it's not even this one. It's so fucking remarkable, what an incredible twist. That is character development right there. Now we're getting a little bit of the origin story of Aramaru here, which only makes him even more mysterious. Well, I see my sympathy was misplaced. You seriously judge a game on what other people say about it? You sure have missed many a good game. Also, shame on you. Don't give out criticism if you don't actually have the knowledge to back it up. It's just stupid to say something's wrong and then give no evidence at all to support your theory. And that's Researching 101. This guy reddits. Also, it appears that you really do only know how to split how to spit out insults. I'm gonna have fun with this. Hello again, my old friend. I see you're here to argue once again. Too bad this will end with you weeping, because your argument is less than the dust I'm sweeping. But you will not give up yet, because you don't realize that it's the internet. The internet. So you might as well be voiceless, as all arguments here are practically worthless. Dave Matthews goes full Robert Frost here with this personalized slam poem to Aramaru. I get that it's supposed to be a Sound of Silence parody, and it's, uh, it's executed wonderfully. A special song poem about the argument you still persist on despite the flaws in your argument. P.S. You still haven't told me what your favorite song in the series is. Did I ask? No, bitch, I didn't. Fuck off. Shut the fuck up. I didn't even read what you said because I just know it's dumb as shit, lol. Come on, man, he took the time to write an entire parody song for you. The least you could do is read the lyrics. For about four days, there was peace in the comment section where people were going over things they liked and didn't like about the game, and then Aramaru comes in full fury here, pitchfork in hand, ready to slap shit around. He reignites the argument by saying, Obviously do if yo pussy ass won't just leave the conversation. Dave says, Pfft, ha ha ha, now I remember why I stick around. I'd love to see what kind of pathetic retort and comeback you are going to make at me that I can easily tear apart. Really, it is rather satisfying to see what you come up with. Once again, there was a truce called in the comment section for about a week, and then Aramaru came back, and Dave immediately noticed. He's like the NORAD defense system, able to hone in on Aramaru's presence, and then attack. Oh, hello there. Ready for round two, my little whiny failure? Round and round the argument goes, when will it stop, no one knows. That meme has been dead, fucking idiot. I'm ready for you to piss off, you worthless fuck. I did not drag your pride through the mud and make you look like a brainless, arrogant maggot. You did. You destroyed your own argument. You ignored the statements that made you look like a fool. You chose to spit out nothing but insults. Your fault. Your stupidity. Deal with it. 
or stick around and continue to look like a moron. It's entertaining. And besides, we win either way. And you lose either way. Dave hits him with some kind of superhero monologue right before he throws the bad guy in jail. And Aramaru says, Don't care to read your arguments, lol. As a matter of fact, I only read the first reply, lol. Quit wasting my time and fuck off. Then you are nothing but a bottom barrel fool who will have no success in life. As I said, you don't bother to defend yourself at all. That makes you an idiot. Also, why should I? You have no power here and you never will. The fact that you think you do just displays your idiocy for everyone. Besides, I already gave you the requirements for my departure. Or are you incapable of reading as well, my little maggot? Everything Dave has been saying thus far sounds like the Rick and Morty copy pasta from Reddit. I mean, I think Dave is in the right here because Aramaro is a huge fucking asshole, but man, he's really going about all of it in a terrible way. A month goes by. Is he finally gone? Yeah, he is gone. Is he gone if your dumbass would just quit replying? I didn't even read shit you said. I told you that I would only leave if you either apologize for being rude, or if you went ten comments without swearing. You are not good at remembering things, are you, my little maggot? Hello, little maggot. Just letting you know that I am still in this comment chain, just in case you thought you were rid of me or that you actually won this argument. Okay, bye now. This was after a month of him not replying, so Dave just really wants to continue this, and nothing makes me more uncomfortable than reading Dave keep calling someone my little maggot. Like, this must be how it feels for some girls when they hear the word moist. Every time I read him saying my little maggot, I just get like tingly and uncomfortable and break out into like a little profuse sweat. It's just yucky. I feel like I'm reading some old woman's fanfic where she's describing some weird sexual intercourse she had at a biker bar or something, and it's just making me uncomfortable. I don't know why he keeps calling this guy my little maggot. I don't give a fuck where you are, dumb bitch. Just like no one cares about you, my little maggot. This will be the last time you see Dave with this kind of confidence, because he's about to meet the actual muscle here. Mr. Hater. If Aramaru was a supervillain, then Mr. Hater is a fucking turbo villain. He's a galactic villain, a universal threat, a divine being of villainy. I don't even know what to call him, a fucking raid boss of villainy. Because he comes in here and just starts slapping shit around. He's a big asshole as well, of course, but he brings Dave to his knees here. This is like when you're reading a comic book and the hero's in trouble. So Mr. Hater comes in here with a full chub, full erection, red alert. He calls out Dave in front of the entire classroom. I see you have a superiority complex and are very self-centered. How very hypocritical. You're no better than him. Guess I gotta clean house and deal with little keyboard warriors like you myself. That is honestly like some Marvel's Thanos shit right there. Dave is still riding the high after he seemingly defeated Aramaru, so he replies to Mr. Hater with a large amount of confidence and a bit of arrogance, saying, Heh, you poor naive fool. When did I ever claim that I was better than Little Maggot? That I'm better than you? Oh, to live in your little fantasy. Can you not see what I am doing? Or are you just as blind as he is? Of course, I can tell you're cut from the same cloth as my Little Maggot, so I'll humor your attempts at insulting me and everyone else present. Let's see how long you last. Dave's still under the impression that he's the king of this Thunderdome, but what he hasn't realized yet is Mr. Hater's not locked in here with Dave. Dave is locked in here with Mr. Hater. Oh, I know your intentions very well, and I intend to stop it. I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? Just look at your comment, you poor naive fool, to live in your little fantasy. These are things that a narcissistic, self-centered man-child would say. How am I or anyone with half a brain cell supposed to take you seriously? There's a reason the other guy left. You won't last long, Dave. You won't last long because underneath all that bravado, you're just a sad little boy with delusions of grandeur, who, by the way, can't talk for shit. So here's a piece of friendly advice. Turn away now and stop wasting Aramaru's time, because if you don't, by the time this is over, you'll be my little maggot. No response. Guess I must have hit one of your soft spots, Winky. So you actually have some bite, do you? Good. Let's see what you've got. I will compliment you on your use of insults, as well as how you get straight to the point. Dave is immediately showing that Mr. Hater has hurt him. You can't do that, Dave. You can never show weakness to a man like Mr. Hater. He can smell blood in the water. He can smell cum in a bathtub. He will pounce. And you can't let him find any amount of scrapes on your armor. Dave, he showed a weakness, and Mr. Hater 
exploited it, unfortunately. Heh, <laughs> of course you didn't realize. I wasn't talking about Lunar. I was talking about you and me. We don't care what others think of our opinion. We just say whether we agree or disagree with someone's opinion. In that way, we are alike, you and I. Don't you agree? I love this exchange here. This is like the season finale here when the two characters are monologuing each at each other before they start beating each other with like a stick or something. Ah, I see you're trying to get on my good side. As you know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. How about this, Dave? Write a full paragraph apologizing to Aramaru and I might consider agreeing with you. And by the way, it has to be a real nice it has to be real nice, so no calling him my little maggot. Otherwise, I might just start calling you that myself. That would require me to have a single shred of respect towards Little Maggot. And in case you did not read the whole conversation, I did apologize to him. He threw it back in my face and used it to insult me without responding to it whatsoever. You, on the other hand, are actually participating in a discussion, while my Little Maggot only responds with the same insults like he's a broken fax machine. You, I respect, Little Wasp. I forgot to click read more for the screenshot, but it said, I do not respect Little Maggot. So now Dave, for some reason, is calling Mr. Hater Little Wasp. I don't understand where he's getting this from. Maybe like from old 60s movies or something where it was cool. And then he references a fax machine, which hasn't been in use for the last 30 years. So I, I just don't know what's really going on here. Maybe Dave is caught in a time vortex and he's communicating with us from the past. And he's only able to communicate through the comment section of Paper Mario Final Boss Song. But yeah, I just really fucking love this part here. This feels like the climax of the entire argument. Dave going with the whole, we're not so different, you and I. We're one of the same. It's like some shit you'd see in Naruto Sasuke right before their final fight. It's fucking wonderful. Hmm, you make a fair point. I shall apologize to him, but do not expect a paragraph. You make sound arguments, Mr. Wasp. I'm not one to call someone by childish names, but you are very hypocritical after all, so I expect nothing less, anyway. Do go ahead. Where's the apology? I don't see it. Mr. Hater's trying to rush this. It hasn't even been a full day at this point. Mr. Hater, he wants that apology ASAP. So now you can see Mr. Hater has assumed control of this entire argument. The entire tone has shifted here, and now Dave is at the mercy of Mr. Hater, and he wants his homework. Do not rush me. It's been two days now, so no excuses. You aren't going to apologize, are you? I figured as much. If you wish to continue arguing, then be my guest, kid. Dave is starting to panic a little bit. He doesn't want to write this apology because he does not respect Aramaru, but he is afraid of Mr. Hater, so he's caught in between a rock and a hard place here, and he's, he's treading water in the comment section. One, I have a life at the moment. Two, you need a little bit of patience. One word. College. You don't go to college, David. Then you clearly set your expectations of me far too low. A shame, really. I thought you'd be smart enough to not do what little maggot did. Stop lying to yourself, David. How about you tell me what's actually going on? College, as I said before. Do you not listen, or are you refusing to believe that I have a life outside of this? Now, if you excuse me, I have a music class to attend. I really don't understand why Dave even feels compelled to keep answering at this point. He doesn't want to write the apology. He shouldn't write an apology, honestly. He just doesn't have to reply to Mr. Hater. He can just wash his hands of this whole thing and still come out as the victor. But for some reason, he keeps engaging with Mr. Hater in here, and Mr. Hater's pressure is somehow, like, leaking into Dave's real world, it seems, because it feels like he's stressing about this apology, which he shouldn't write in the first place. Mr. Hater goes in on Dave, starts poking holes into his claims about college because four months ago it was still coronavirus shut down so classes weren't going on, so Dave feels the need to defend himself again. And then he kind of just explains he just doesn't want to fucking apologize, which he shouldn't. I'm glad he doesn't. Dave says, One, truthfully, I don't want to apologize to Armu because I know for a fact it would not be genuine and no matter how much I hate a person, I'm not going to insult them by giving them a mocking half-assed apology. And two, online classes are a thing that exists and I'm not doing just a music class. Who is the antagonistic one here? Because it definitely isn't me. You poor, poor, pathetic whelp. 
barking and baying like anything you say will ever matter. No, your words don't hurt me because they are artificial, fake, designed, and spoken for the sole purpose of inflicting pain without putting actual feeling behind it. Ha, 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 no. Your words are hollow and do not deserve the electrons my brain cells would have to burn to process them, just like you. You're not special, you're not unique, you're not important, and you never will be, not now, not ever. So go ahead, whelping. Keep making a fool of yourself. I'll just watch the show, laughing all the while. And in your ivory tower of hypocrisy, did you ever once realize I never denied what you have been saying? You are a parasite, Mr. Hater. Something that must tear everyone down to justify their worthless existence. Perhaps I am one too, but that's where our similarities end. You lash out at anyone you see is below you. I lash out at people who do... I lash out at people who do what you and Armu did, insult and tear into someone because they dared to have an opinion you did not agree with, or lash out at people who defend themselves from other people like you. I never said I was better. But does it really matter in the end? At the end of the day, one of us looks like the bad guy to everyone else, and since I haven't been antagonizing everyone participating in this, it most definitely not me who's the bad guy. Try to say I'm wrong here. You're not wrong, Dave. Not at all. And people like Aramaru and Mr. Hater, yeah, they suck a lot of fat ass. It's sad that someone cares this much about someone's opinion on something that doesn't matter. 100%. Agree with you entirely there, Dave. But the way you're handling all this and then putting this huge, like, presidential speech here is not good either. This is the wrong way of handling any of this. And this, there's really just no point in arguing in a YouTube comment section to begin with. There are no winners here. Mr. Hater breaks down his response line by line. You lash out at anyone you see is below you. Dave, don't be ridiculous. I'm not as narcissistic as you, or at all for that matter. I lash out at anyone who do what you and Armu did. A mistake you will regret as you have started all of this, and I aim to end it. The two go back and forth about the apology that uh, Dave doesn't want to write. Mr. Hater just keeps picking apart each line of everything he says. My words are said solely to get you to leave. That's never going to happen, Dave. I've grown very persistent over the years, and trust me, persistence pays, and I will stay here for months if I had to. Will you? Yeah, big guy, I'm sure your persistence pays, living in a fucking comment chain for months. How productive and incredible. There are just some people who live their life to argue online, and it's sad as shit. This guy is the perfect example, willingly saying, I will stay in this fucking thread for months because I have nothing else going on in my life. That is pathetic. That's fucking sad, Mr. Hater. Apology seems unlikely. Then you will perish here eventually with me, as it's either you apologize to Aramaru now and we'll be on our way, or we're going to be staying here for a long, long time. So, with that being said, let's just start all over on a positive note. We aren't going to start all over on a more positive note until you start apologizing, Dave. Are you going to apologize for your own hostility? Short answer, no. Unlike you, I did nothing wrong, Dave. So it's either you apologize to Aramaru and behave, or you slowly perish with me for months. Either way, I consider it a win-win. And this is where the story stops. I mean, it goes on a little bit further, but nothing is more pathetic than this mic drop from Mr. Hater. These are the people you argue with online, people that have actually nothing better to do. He considers it a win-win if someone is perishing, wasting their time in a comment section with him. That's so fucking sad. He considers it successful if he wastes somebody else's time and wastes his own time because he's already miserable in the first place. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. Three months after all of this went down, as the dust was starting to settle, Mr. Hater and Dave just stopped communicating with each other. And there was just momentary bliss as everyone read through the thread. And then Yoshi comments, tagging Aramaru, and Aramaru's been tagged this entire time. Yoshi just points out it's been 10 months, but 64 really good, kind of basic, Thousand Year Door, bop, and all this. Just kind of breaks down his opinion of the music. And then Aramaru, from out of fucking nowhere, comes out of retirement to deliver one of the most powerful conclusions to any story ever given. I don't give a fuck about your opinion, this song is still shit. What a beautiful way of wrapping all of this up. But yeah, anyway, the last interaction between our main characters was four months ago. From what I checked today, there wasn't any new developments that I noticed. Uh, a, a few more people have been made aware of this because it was posted on Twitter. That's how I found it. And this has just been truly a joy, delightful to read through. So just keep all this in mind next time you think you're confident enough to leave an opinion on a Paper Mario song.
That's about it. See ya.